Greetings. This is Total Tattle with Asantua and I'm Marian, your host. You are welcome to Did You Know This? Did you know that no matter your background, age or gender, you could make an impact on your generation? Did you know that if you consider your environment and think about how what you learn in school can be applied, that could be the beginning of your contribution to social change? Did you know that the mundane which we consider as humble beginners can put you on a pedestal one day. Our guest today is a young female who holds a bachelor's degree in civil engineering and currently pursuing a master's degree in water supply and environmental sanitation at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She is a graduate of Ahantaman Senior High School and a MasterCard Foundation Scholar alumna. She is a co-winner of the second edition of the Presidential Pitch Competition, where her team presented an invention on the production of sanitary pad from plantain and banana stem fiber, an intervention for improved menstrual hygiene for rural women. Ladies and gentlemen, our conversation today is with Miss Emily Otukoyisen. Welcome, Emily, to Tittle Turtle. Thank you, Asantua, for okay. the invite. <laughs> yes, so I, I have given you an introduction. I'm sure viewers and listeners would like to know more about you, especially what I have not said. So yeah. kindly share with us a bit. <laughs> so more. I'm a fancy. Mm. I was born in Takrade. So family of four. Yes, I come from a humble background. I schooled throughout in a government institution from primary to junior high to secondary school. Thank you. Tertiary is still government institution. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have two younger siblings after me, and so that's my son, big sister Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I pursued science. I don't want to delve in more to some other questions, but yes. that's my background. Okay, so what science. led to you pursuing science? Was it uh, something, the ambition that you had nursed from your younger years, or it was someone who pointed you in that direction? Well, I'll say in junior high school, I was very interested in science activities, science exhibitions, I was there, and I was also I'm academically good. And usually for students who are academically good, they usually encourage them to pursue science. Yes, I think that's the whole notion. And so from there, yes, moving to senior high school, I decided to pursue science. I thought of being a medical doctor. Maybe because that was what I knew all along. A science students, really good medicine. That's the trend. Yes, if not medicine, nursing. Yes, because your job is to cure. Uh, but then, somewhere along the line, I think immediately after senior high school, I applied to some medical schools. Yes, but then I had to spend one year at home. And during that time, I taught, yes, okay. at a primary school locally in Takrade. So Why did you spend a year at home? Would you like to share? Yes. Okay. And so I, I think one reason has to do with finances. Yes, it was financially tough way back home. And so I spent a year at home teaching. Yes, and I taught primary four pupils. So my class was a cute size, 20 kids yes, <laughs> for all the courses. <laughs> and But unfortunately for me, during my teaching activities, I had a call from my senior high school, and the administration was like, Emily, how are you doing? We received a letter from a certain foundation called MasterCard. Back then, I knew nothing about MasterCard Foundation and what it was about, and it was about a scholarship. I missed something out. When I finished um, junior high, before moving to senior high, I had a scholarship opportunity from the government too. But that never came through. We never knew where the funds went to. So when I had another scholarship, I said, hmm, this must be one of those things again. <laughs> well, is this really true? I said, let me just follow through. So I had to go way back to my senior high school to pick up the application forms and I saw MasterCard Foundation with some listed students from the arts science and then from other courses. And I decided to apply through. And when I did, surprisingly, I was called for an interview right here on Kenya State Campus. And I went through the interview, went then. Yes, I was called again. But then one thing about MasterCard Foundation is that they do a, a sort of detailed process of selecting their students. So they paid or they went through door-to-door -door visits. They actually come to where you say you come from. 
come and see whether it's actually true as you wrote on the application form. And I was surprised. So they, they paid a visit to a house, like my dad, my parents, and then, yeah. Then finally I had a call that told me you've been picked up as a MasterCard scholar. But then it came along with the program civil engineering. Okay. So that's the story of how <laughs> I pursued civil engineering. Okay. Back then they what were What was the feeling people. when okay. you did not uh, get your program of choice, so to speak? Well, I think I wanted to read medicine, probably because that was what we all knew back then. <laughs> that's what we were conditioned. I don't know that's yeah. still with science students and then medicine yeah. yes if not medicine nursing engineering is really heard related, of yeah. exactly but um back then i didn't even know about the different um, courses within engineering yes it was just it, it was perceived to be so difficult and men related and it's actually true mm -hmm. yes and civil, civil, yeah. civil engineering is purely male dominated and so we, we we really knew about all the other options in the sciences mm -hmm. that is why usually go through the whole process of oh you want to end up being a medical doctor so yeah. we're conditioned that way yes so now you have admission you have your letter mm. did you have to think about acceptance because you're supposed oh. to write an acceptance <laughs> letter <laughs> when i was told i've been picking you said um just as you said they think about acceptance you have to fill a form do you accept i i i was rightly accepted because i spent a year home teaching and one of the main reasons was due to finances so if you have a scholarship opportunity and it's paid tuition, paid accommodation, allowances, paid um, books, everything. Okay. I said, oh, this, this is really too good to be through. Let me yes. just grab this and let's see how it goes. Yeah, so, right. And it came with two engineering. I decided to give me my best shots. So MasterCard scholarship is what actually will propel you to come to the university. And then the scholarship comes with a program package which you embrace wholeheartedly. Yes. <laughs> and then you've come to KNUST first year student pursuing your degree in civil engineering and also involved with the activities of the MasterCard Foundation. Would you like to share with us some of the enriching experiences that the MasterCard Foundation offers to the scholars? Oh, great. So when we came first year, as, as part of the package, we went to um, International Leadership Foundation. It was a seminar which was stretched through a span of two years. So yes, we had to spend some aside from attending lectures, um, after lectures, go through the whole seminar. And I, th I think as part of their goals is to instill leadership within the scholars and the sense of integrity. I think their core values, integrity, humility, and then uh, yes, um, committed to reach back to your community. These three key things. And so it was it was really an enriching experience. We all hosted at Brunei, if you know here. Yes. The Gas Hostel. Gas yeah. Hostel, yes. Mm -hmm. I think complex was really catered for scholars. Mm -hmm. And so we actually interacted and mingled among with ourselves. We and also get to students. with other international students. We we got to hear of each other's background and with the other students' opinions. Yeah, so it, it was really enriching being a part of MasterCard Foundation. Apart from the leadership seminars, were there any other activities or were you required to do some projects as oh, your own contribution great. to society? To society. Have to have missed yeah. that one. <laughs> so for every vacation, we are encouraged to give back to your community. Um, first year, after I was through with my academics, I decided to work on a, a project that is Lima Foundation. And so I was trying to go through the whole process of how MasterCard Foundation pick up students this time around with um, learning materials. And so I went to a junior high school community, rural community, also in Western region. And two pupils were beneficiaries, giving them learning materials, textbooks, stationaries, just trying to start something to see how it goes. Yes. Along the line, I would say that finances was also a thing because you have to fund from okay, your from own your resources. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So that was something that I did first year. But the whole thing of giving back to your community was, was really satisfying. You also could contribute to helping people live a better lives. And I think it was it was an interesting experience. Yes. Okay. So overall, what would you say as the contribution of the MasterCard Foundation to who you are as a person now, apart from helping you acquired degree hmm. great i can't miss out acquired a degree <laughs> because being here i think led to so many other opportunities 
and I can't really separate the two years. I think being here, I think I'll talk later more about the project, presidential pitch and everything. But then yes, it, it gave me the opportunity to attend other seminars, to attend other pitches. I'm highly interested in research projects and prototyping. It gave me all that experience. And so yes, it also helped us connect with each other, aside from MasterCard scholars right in KST and other universities elsewhere. Um, during your undergraduate studies, uh, what would you consider your happiest moment? And then also, did you encounter any challenges or surprises? Happiest moment? I think a number of good moments. You can share a few. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the, the first one. So the very first um, competition I decided to engage in was organized by TCC. Yes, and with my friend in class, Elham, with another colleague. Yes, we decided to design this zero cooling chamber yeah. to preserve food crops. That was the whole How idea. How does that work? Zero cooling. Oh, okay. So for the benefit of those who don't have any science background. Oh, okay. It has gone to a lot of modifications, but it's basically a chamber space. And our very first idea was funny. We were thinking of how to preserve the, the, the food crop, which was cassava. So we actually researched and read that so if you reduce the um, carbon dioxide content and then sort of increase the nitrogen and oxygen content, you prolong the lifespan of the food crop. So what we went to get was um we actually got oxygen and then carbon dioxide and nitrogen gases from air liquid went yeah. all the way to get those gases <laughs> that <laughs> and is we costly, actually isn't it? that was costly mm -hmm. yes and we actually introduced it into the chamber hmm. and I, I i recall a man when he was partner with the gas he told us to be extremely careful with it because when it gets into contact with fire it can inflame we were scared of the prototype we had designed ourselves <laughs> even though we had the whole idea that was the first start of the whole journey of trying to design and prototyping anything we were tech by the way okay. and the competition was held at engineering auditorium but it was really interesting we, we did something we learned a lot from our mistakes and then it made us better researchers Okay, so that is one of the joyous moments of yes. your undergraduate studies. Any challenges, challenges any sad days mm. that you would want to share? Yeah. Not to be sad, but to <laughs> encourage someone who is listening or viewing that life is not all rosy all the time. Yeah. When I came here first, yeah, um, because, well, I was coming from L.S. and Dow Senior High School, I, I realized that amongst the whole college, I, I could see only me <laughs> from my senior high school. And people are doing buddy buddy. Yes. They don't have a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so you usually get butchy and gay girls and all that. You know, they usually come in like groups yeah, and like that. Yes, and they are friends way back. But then it was just me. It wasn't even just me, the whole of university, except some other few people who were from other, who read other courses like arts, yes. But, the whole sciences it was just me and so mingling with people was difficult making friends for me first year was difficult and i was really quiet too yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> group studies i i had no group study partners and that also made me struggle a bit academically in the first year so yes yeah, whilst my most of my colleagues were having first last year getting good grades in the first year i was in the second class up, up yes okay. and i recall um I actually worked to a lecturer, Professor Adam as someone. He's now the provost of the College yes. of Engineering. And actually I had a conversation with him of how everything was difficult and where I came from. And he really did good encouraging me to, to study hard and to not give up. And I think that was really helpful. Yeah, so the very little conversations you have with students who are struggling initially does go a long way because I don't know probably I would have maybe ended the course yeah. <laughs> if it was important and yeah. that it took courage to do that so I think you you've always had confidence within you for because not the, the average student cannot approach a lecturer and just you know call out unless maybe that is the academic tutor or maybe the head of the department, but it's rare. <laughs> so I think that is a cue that other younger people watching should take from you, should take from Emily, that uh, if you have challenges, call out for help. That's the only way you get help. If you don't call out, 
you you suffer in silence as one uh, mentor of mine will say he says <laughs> you keep quiet and suffer <laughs> you don't want to be in that category so call out when you need help um i would like to find out from you apart from learning and embarking on projects do you have any hobbies oh i do because there's a perception <laughs> that scientists are bookworms and mm. don't have a, a fun life or don't have a life to put it in quotes <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do for fun yes i'm a makeup artist okay yes but you're not wearing makeup ah it's true <laughs> <laughs> so no, how I is that so hot this morning <laughs> yeah i i rarely do wear makeup if i'm okay. going for programs so you yes, do it for people, people but you don't I do, do it for people Why? except on really really special occasions maybe a wedding then i put on a makeup okay yeah. so why don't you wear makeup but you like to put it on people <laughs> <laughs> i do it occasionally mm. yes but not most of the time how did you come by that scale oh once again so i think mastercard foundation usually during the vacations they we they engage in um school training of scholars so there was bead making there was makeup there was swimming and i participated in makeup artistry oh, that's nice. that was one of the ways i yes I you knew swim. how to swim so you didn't have to Oh uh, no, I I didn't know how to swim, okay. but the pool was being overpopulated with students. Okay. And I think if you're usually learning how to swim, you, you need swallow water and then you drink water. Out. But I saw how <laughs> people were spitting in the pool. I was like, no, I'm not going to swim. <laughs> where did this happen? Um, Kenya to pool side. Oh, okay. Yes. So that was where campus. everything was going on. And I also bake as well. That's what I currently do. Okay. And on I the get side. some fans. Yes. Okay. What do you bake? Cakes. cakes cakes pastries okay special cakes with special ice and... cakes with ice and... oh that's nice and yeah. where did you acquire that skill for that i'll say it was our self-taught okay yes. you go online and then <laughs> I you watch online, videos and, and, I and, I watch videos. and i've tried this for about three years and okay. finally it's looked as i want it to look <laughs> great great nuggets young people i hope you are listening <laughs> yes emily i would like you to share with viewers and then with me how you came about the idea of producing sanitary towels from local materials Great. um during final year yeah there was a challenge being held on campus so they called it whisker um, wine that is way from engineering women from college of science women from arts yes i think it was something the women commissioners were trying to do together with the then provost of um, College of Science, yes, Professor Ibo Kuchu. And the whole challenge was to encourage ladies with research or projects to come on board. And even if you have an idea to come on board, to do something and to exhibit. That's where it, it, it started from. And so for the challenge, I was thinking, hmm, um, can I do something around sanitary pads? In fact, I've been reading on it for a while about how sanitary pad is being made, about reusable sanitary pads, about trying to use organic materials for sanitary pads. And I decided to work on the whole project of using an um, absorbable material for a sanitary pad. Yeah, so banana fiber and plantain fiber can be used as well. It, it's called pseudo stem mm -hmm. and it's very absorbent. You know, when you cut the stem off, you realize that it contains large amounts of water. Exactly. So its ability to contain that amount of water definitely means that you shrink out all the water. You should be able to absorb that much quantity of water. To feel that this is the pores. Exactly. The pores that Why exactly. this particular material and not any other? Any other material because yeah. of its absorptive properties. Okay. Would you also yes. consider the fact that it's probably abandoned? Exactly. Okay. Because it's also abandoned, we should say, and because it's, it's a waste material. Usually, whenever you cut off the the fruit or the plantain or the banana, it's usually being thrown away, and it's, it no longer has any use for. Yes, you can use it to turn out to products like mat, clothes. It's being done elsewhere, but then yes, the whole idea was so if it can be used for that purpose, then can't it also be used for sanitary pads? And traditionally, I think our forefathers used it as towel. Yes. Yes. So yes. that that is connecting um, <laughs> <don't>. indigenous knowledge <laughs> to <laughs> to modern knowledge. So yes. I think that is very innovative on your part. So how did it start? I mean, so you have this idea that okay, this pseudo stem has takes up a lot of moisture. So if I squeeze it out and I replace it, it might work. 
you go get your stems and then what? Work, work us so through the stems. So it, it started at the back of. But you don't have to give out give all out your trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. It, it started at the back of um, engineering laboratory. I don't know if you know those labs. Yeah, the College of Engineering at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, we actually fetched um, some samples of the stem. Back then, I had met my co partner. She was also interested in participating in the Whisker Challenge. Okay. But then she was just alone and she was looking for a team to join. Okay. And it's been, team spirit is being encouraged and it's really good yes, to find someone to partner with. And she was from the business school, so okay. basically zero idea in sciences or engineering. Was the program targeting only scientists? Oh, it was open to all? It was open to all okay. female students in various colleges. Okay. Exactly. So I think when we went for the first meeting, I actually wasn't present and they, they met all the other teams and listened to it and it's like, oh, she's waiting for the other person called Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Some way, somehow, she just wanted to work with me. Okay. And so we met first hand and decided to work on it. So I already had an idea and how we go about it. So we actually started, we got some um, banana stem right here from the College of I think chemistry behind chemistry yeah, building yeah, block yeah. here, where you see the plantain stems. Mm -hmm. banana stems here. Yeah. We got it. Went through the manual way of doing it because we had no equipment at that time. Chopped, crushed, extracted the fluid, and then yes, chopped it finer into pieces. Back then, because it was a first prototype, it looked nothing like what any of us were wearing <laughs> 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 for for our menstrual fluid. No. <laughs> so we actually had um, a, a rubber polythene, which is black, to serve as an impermeable layer. Then the fiber on top. Then we got the usual cloth napkin, baby napkins that they use to tie for babies when they have yes, to line the surface. Then we actually sewn all around it to create that pad-like foam. Yes. So that was the first ever prototype we did. And we finished, then we looked at this one, like, oh, it's kind of absorbed by then. Both of us won't wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.